Hey, how's it going everyone? Devoski here. This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to deploy an ERC20 token onto the Polygon chain. And we're going to be using something called Truffle to do that. Now, if you um, get stuck anywhere through this tutorial, make sure you hit me up on buymeacoffee.com. I'll be more than happy to help you. I do consulting in the blockchain space, so I can help you deploy your ESC20 token on Polygon or really anything to do with Polygon or Ethereum or anything like that. But without further ado, let's just get started. There are a few dependencies that you're going to need. What I'm going to be using is VS Code and Windows Subsystem for Linux for my terminal. So I'll leave links in the description for how to get those, how to install them. Once you've done that, you can continue with the tutorial. Now, once you've opened VS Code, and you, you can see uh, you know, the sim a similar screen to what I have here, there's a few dependencies that we're going to need to install. The first one is Truffle. And Truffle is basically um, a software, a framework that enables us to very easily deploy tokens, deploy smart contracts to Ethereum, to Polygon, to any Ethereum style chain like that. So the first thing to install is Truffle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open a terminal, we're going to hit the terminal button up here, click new terminal like that. And then the next command we're going to do is we're going to type Truffle in it. And that is going to be like to create our Truffle project. So once you've done that, you'll have a basic project um, like you see here in the left-hand side. You won't see everything, but I'll, I'll, uh, we'll be adding things together as we go. So the next thing to do after that is to install something called Open Zeppelin contracts. And basically what Open Zeppelin is, is a standard set of Ethereum contracts that everyone's been using for a long time. We all know that they're safe and secure. Uh, we're not writing everything from scratch. We're going to use the library, Open Zeppelin library. So the next thing to do is install Open Zeppelin's smart contract library. And we're going to be plucking an ERC-20 token contract from that and deploying that for our own ERC-20 contract. And the final thing that we need, the final dependency that you need to type into the terminal is, um, is for the HD wallet provider, which is basically um, a way that we can use our wallet within Truffle to send messages to the Polygon chain, sign messages, pay to deploy our contract and all of that kind of thing. So we actually need to pay a little bit of gas in, uh, in Matic to the Polygon network, and then it will allow us to create our smart contract. Um, so the best way to use a wallet in this situation is to download um, a MetaMask wallet. I'll leave a link into the description. It's basically a browser extension. You can put tokens into that, and then you can uh, get your, you know, your private key and your seed phrase out of that, and you can put it into the Truffle project, and you'll be ready to go. So I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. If you look in your Truffle project after you've typed Truffle in it, you'll see that you have a file called Truffle Config. JS. And inside truffleconfig.js is all the information that Truffle needs to know to connect to the correct node and deploy stuff on the correct chain and basically know everything uh, that it needs to know to deploy the contracts that we want to deploy. So once you have a look in this contract, in this um, in this file, you'll see that everything is commented out because it's basically like, you know, just a boilerplate. But I've added a little bit of information here inside the networks section. Um, so basically, you can ignore everything else. We're just going to be adding one network, and that's the Polygon network. So you can see I've got a little bit of information in here, and I'll explain all of the important details about what it all means. So I've, I've called um, you know, this part of the configuration Polygon, and we're using HD Wallet Provider to add in our secret MetaMask key phrase. So when you go to MetaMask and you go into settings, into the security section, and reveal your seed phrase, you'll see a bunch of words, and it's going to be like castle, fish, lamppost, things like that. There's probably going to be like 16 or so of those words. That's your secret phrase. That's what you need to add into this mnemonic just as a string. So all the words like that. Um, I won't add mine because I don't want to compromise my wallet. So I'll just leave the word mnemonic here um, just so that it all makes sense. And that's the way that we're going to tell Truffle what wallet to use, what wallet's going to be paying for the contracts that we're going to be deploying onto the Polygon network. So that's the mnemonic. The next part of this HD wallet provider stuff is which like RPC, remote procedure call, node we're going to be connecting to to get into the Polygon network, to start messing around with the Polygon network, to start like interacting with the Polygon network. So there are a few different RPCs, uh, different nodes that you can connect to. Some of them are really reliable, some of them are really unreliable. I found that Polygon RPC, for me, has been the most reliable RPC node for Polygon. There are a few like official recommended ones, like Matic Vigil, things like that, but I've found that they haven't been particularly reliable, and that when I've been deploying stuff using that, and, they, and, and the deployment has failed, I generally get back really sort of cryptic error messages that haven't made a lot of sense, and it's been quite a sticking point, quite difficult to get around. So I would suggest using Polygon RPC. So the next thing that we need um, in our information is the network ID of the Polygon network, which is 137. And then the rest of this stuff here um, isn't particularly important. It just helps the deployment run smoothly, except for this gas price parameter. You do need this gas price parameter. Basically, in the Polygon network, initially, there was no minimum gas price 
for doing transactions. And then you know a bunch of stuff happened on the Polygon network and the Polygon developers decided, hey, we want to increase the minimum gas price from basically like one, um, one way to uh, 30 GUE. And so if you look at this number here, this is 50 GUE. But if you, if you put a number here under 30 GUE, like 29 GUE, the Polygon network will automatically reject your transaction. Okay, and that wasn't always the case. So some wallets and some software out there still is unaware of that minimum sort of transaction cost. And um, if you put in an incorrect, you know, a too low gas price, um, the transaction will be rejected by the Polygon network, but the software won't really know why. And it will give you error messages that don't make any sense. And it'll be difficult to understand what went on. Because basically it was like a hot fix when the Polygon developers said, we're going to now enforce that the minimum GUE is going to be 30. So a lot of the software hasn't really caught up. So make sure that um, you put at least 30 GUE. I'm, I'm going to put 50 GUE here just because it's still only like a cent. So, you know, you're not really going to feel it. And the transactions are going to go through a lot more quickly. The deployment is going to happen a lot more quickly. So that's why I've included that there in the configuration file. So that's the Truffle config. That's all the information that we need to tell Truffle that we're going to be deploying our contracts to a particular node on the Polygon network with a particular price, with a particular wallet, right? So that all makes sense. And now the next thing we're going to do, which is part of that command um, that we typed before, which is the open Zeppelin command, we're going to be plucking out a contract from there. So if you go into your node modules, uh, node modules folder, I'll just show you uh, what we've installed here. You can go into node modules and then uh, you'll have a, a folder called at open Zeppelin. And if you look in there, there's a whole bunch of different uh, open Zeppelin like standard contracts that we can look at. So the one that we're going to be looking at today is in the tokens folder, and then we're going to be deploying an ERC20 token. Now, an ERC20 token in and of itself is kind of um, is kind of like a half implemented thing. It's not it's not um, it's not the full story. It's not everything that we need to have a fully fleshed out fully functioning ERC20 token. It's what it, it, um, they say in the ERC20 token file, and I'll actually show you here because um, it might be interesting to see. The implementation is agnostic to the way the tokens are created. And that means that like, you know, we have some ERC20 tokens that have a fixed supply in the beginning and you can't mint anymore. And then you have other kinds of ERC20 tokens where you can mint more tokens any, any time you like. And then you have really complicated, interesting governance ERC20 tokens where people vote on stuff and then things happen as a consequence of the voting. So ERC20 in and of itself is kind of like a boilerplate it's, it's the first layer of ERC-20, but then you're supposed to kind of add another layer on top depending on the specifics of what you want to happen. So we're not going to be deploying strictly ERC-20. We're going to be deploying a preset of um, like an extension on ERC-20, which is called ERC-20 Preset Fixed Supply. So basically what that means is we're going to deploy our ERC-20 token and then immediately as we deploy it, there's going to be a fixed supply of those tokens. And we also have some increased functionality on top of that, which is like minting functionality. So we can say after five minutes after we deploy it, actually, I want 10,000 more tokens. I'm going to mint some more tokens. So ERC-20 preset fixed supply is a pretty flexible kind of token um, for, for you know someone who might want to mint more in the future and have a preset uh, supply in the beginning. So that's what we're going to use. So now that we've had a look at that, it's time to actually start writing our token. Um, so in the contracts folder, that is where all of the different smart contracts that we might want to write would be written, right? So we're going to right click where it says contracts, click new file, and then call that file mytoken.sol. And I've already gone ahead and written all of the code that we would need. Um, to create our fixed supply token and I'll leave this exact code in the description so you can just copy paste that and not have to worry about it But I will go through everything just so you understand what we're doing here So this top line basically just says what compiler version we're going to be using um, to compile our Contracts into bytecode so that the you know ethereum as well the polygon network um, Can understand it on like a machine code level um, and then we're importing from the open zeppelin library our ERC20 preset fixed supply because we're going to be inheriting from that contract. We have ERC20 on the bottom, then we have ERC20 preset fixed supply, and then we're going to extend that into our new token and put some configuration into it. So that's how it's all working. And that basically is what line 9 means. You know, contract my token, that's my token, is an ERC20 preset fixed supply. So we're inheriting the ERC20 preset fixed supply contract that's in the Open Zeppelin library. So once we've done that, 
I've added a couple more interesting uh, you know, pieces of code so that you can understand and I can demonstrate what it means by having an initial supply and then a minted supply on the ERC20 token. So I've created a variable here called initial supply, which is just 10,000 tokens. And the way that um, Solidity works is that it doesn't look at decimal places like you and I would look at decimal places. It just has really big numbers and then says, you know, numbers have 18 decimal places therefore you know the number 1000 with 18 zeros on the end is still the number 1000 and um, that's what this part means we have to multiply it by the number of decimal places that we might want uh, our token to have so really what we're doing is we're initially minting 10,000 tokens um, and then afterwards we're actually going to do another minted supply straight away just to show that functionality off that we can actually mint even more tokens by minting another 10,000 after that um, and so that's basically it. We're, and in, in the constructor, basically what this means, the constructor, it means when we deploy this contract, um, immediately like execute a certain amount of functionality. So what we're going to do in the constructor is we're going to have an ERC20 fixed supply, and the name of it's going to be my token. The ticker is going to be just MT. Um, it's going to have an initial supply of that variable initial supply that we just created above. And then the person who's going to get that initial supply is message.sender. And message.sender basically just means the person who um, initiated the creation of this contract, the person who is sending the message to the Polygon network to create this contract. Um, and once that has all happened, inside the brackets is the functionality that is going to be executed, which is the mint function. We're going to mint for message sender the minted supply. So we're going to have the initial supply in the beginning, and then we're going to have the minted supply after that. So um, now that all that makes sense and, and we have all of our contracts set up, uh, we're going to go into a folder called migrations to set up the actual deployment of this contract and get it onto the Polygon network and finish our deployment. So in our migrations folder, um, there's a couple of things that you probably want to know about the migrations folder, which is that inside of it, there are you know, one or many JavaScript files that all get executed in alphabetical order. So you can see that the, um, the JavaScript file here, one initial migrations.js, the reason that it has the number one at the start is because it's going to be the first thing that we deploy. If we made another file called two second migrations or something like that, the initial migrations JavaScript file would get run first, and then our number two file would get run second. It's like a sequential um, thing. And the way that the reason that it does that is so that we can deploy, you know, really complicated sets of smart contracts that all rely on each other in um, in a sequential fashion. But basically, we're, we're just deploying an ERC20 token, so we're not going to be doing anything fancy like that. I'm just going to stick everything we have into this migrations file. So by default. Truffle adds into this initial migrations file um, something called the migrations contract, and then it deploys that first. And we don't really need to worry about what that does um, that much, but I'll still explain it. So basically, what it means is um, when you deploy something onto the Polygon network or onto the Ethereum network, the migrations contract basically just puts a timestamp, it burns a timestamp into the blockchain and says, something happened right now. And it's, it's basically just a, an easy way um, to track uh, what's happened on the blockchain. And so it's, it's, it's sort of like a standard practice whenever you uh, deploy something, you migrate something, that you have this migrations in your initial part of the deployment um, as a standard practice. But we don't really need it necessarily. It's not strictly necessary for actually deploying the required functionality for our token. But we're just going to leave it in there because why not? Um, but after that, what we're going to do is we're going to have here um, you know, we're going we're gonna to have a message that says deploying my token, and then we're going to actually deploy my token, which is that contract that we created just a moment ago. And then after that is complete, uh, we're going to have another message that says deployed my token, just to let us know that that deployment actually ran successfully. So now it's time to actually deploy our contract to the Polygon network. And to do that, we would type truffle migrate dash dash network Polygon. Because if, if you had a look in the truffle config file, we had a network there specified called Polygon. That's why we call it Polygon here. So if you called that network something else like Matic or whatever you might call it, you'd have to um, call it Matic here as well. Um, so that's what that's referring to. And I just put a dash dash reset on the end there as well, because sometimes with truffle, it does this weird thing that if you, um, you know, attempt to compile or migrate a contract um, and it fails, and then you attempt to do it again, it will kind of 
use an old cached version of the contract. So if you put dash dash reset at the end, then you can be sure that everything is all fresh from the beginning. So that's just a little tip to do that. So now that we've got that, we can actually begin deploying our smart contract and uh, it should appear on the blockchain um, once it's compiled and once it's actually migrated and sent through to the RPC node, everything gets paid, the block gets mined, and we have our smart contract. So now that that deployment is actually completed, there's a little bit of information that we need to look at to find our token that we've actually deployed on the Polygon network. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, in fact, I'll go up to the top first. You'll see that um, the first thing that it deployed is the migrations contract to show that we've actually you know, done a deployment in a standardized way. But the second thing um, that says replacing my token, that basically is all the information about the deployment of my token um, the my token contract onto the polygon network so it has the transaction hash it has the contract address um, it has how much it cost it says eth but that cost is actually in matic so it costs you know less than 0.1 matic so in the order of cents um, so it's actually worth putting the way price uh, quite high just to get that done quickly because it really doesn't cost very much at all but this important one here the contract address is the actual contract address of our token on the blockchain so if you if you copy that and then go to uh, polygon scan and type that in that's polygonscan.com you'll see here that we have our uh, you know my token and we can click into that and the total supply is 20,000 MT because that's what we you know call the ticker MT um, and if you go down to the transaction section you'll see that the actual deployment happened in the beginning and then the um, you know the mint functionality also happened after that so now those tokens have successfully been created and we can add those to our MetaMask wallet. So if you copy the contract address and open your MetaMask wallet, make sure you're connected to the Polygon network. If you don't know how to connect to the Polygon network, I'll leave a link in the description on how you can connect to it. Um, but then you can uh, click the import tokens button and actually add your token. And see it comes up MT token decimals 18 and we have 20,000 MT tokens. So that's pretty much all you need to know. That's a full deployment of an ERC20 token on the Polygon chain. If you have any questions, like I said before, you know, uh, just hit me up on my Buy Me A Coffee page. I'm always open to consulting, always op uh, open to helping out. So just let me know if you get stuck. And you know, I do all kinds of things in the Ethereum, Polygon, Avalanche space, NFT projects, anything like that. So just let me know if you need any help with anything like that. And thank you for watching. I hope um, you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.